All right, guys, so how's it going? So this is my overview on the Nothing Phone after about two days now. It's probably going to be three by the time you see this. But even though I've only had this phone for two to three days, it feels like I've had it for like three weeks. Let's get right into it. All right, so in this video, I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about the build, a lot of time focusing on the software because a lot of other videos I've been seeing, they've been showing a few clips here and there, but now they really kind of did a deep dive into the software. I hope to do a little bit of that today. I'm going to cover the battery a little bit, and I'm also going to cover the camera. So let's just start with the build. This is definitely one of the coolest looking phones I've ever seen. Like, just look at it. I love how transparent it is. I've heard people mention that because of this particular glass back and that it's not flush with the back panel, that it feels a little bit cheap. I am not experiencing that at all. But anyway, so you got transparent glass, you got your camera array, and you have aluminum size. And this is like a perfect tone for the aluminum. I, I, I chose the, the, the blacky, like smoky color. The glass is slightly curved here and it's really difficult to pick up on camera. It helps it be a lot more ergonomic than the flat iPhone or just a lot of other phones out there. But one thing that is flat though is the display. And I feel like every phone maker should go with a flat screen. Like nobody wants a curved screen. Stop giving us those. They're harder to hold. You you get accidental touches. It makes them much less durable because curved glass is easier to crack and it never serves at any purpose. Thank you nothing for using a flat screen. And then the camera placement is really nice too. You're only getting two cameras, but they're two good cameras and I'll get into that. And it protrudes just a tiny bit. Not as much as some of the other flagship phones that you see out there. And part of the design, you can see the circular portion. It kind of is reminiscent of a vinyl record or something. It looks really cool. The screws are exposed, which you would, which typically for phones, they try to hide that detail. I like how nothing exposes it. Really cool detail throughout. I spent a lot of time just staring at the back of this phone. It's insane. And there's a wonderful little red accent in the top right corner. Yep, yeah, so far, like the, this is definitely the best looking phone of the year. There's nothing that comes close to it only because of this back maybe next year we can see more transparency um instead of having a lot of the components covered maybe we could actually see some of the chipset etc that would be kind of cool the, the quality is amazing there's no way you're gonna think that this is only a 600 dollar phone this could hang out with the big boys so now let's look at the display which is typically my favorite section so now this screen gets fairly bright um not as bright as the best of them out there but it's good enough for daylight and it's really hot in south florida right now it's like 95 degrees and it's really really bright bright outside and it is just good enough for me to get by with it it's not as bright as like the iphone 14 pro max it's not as bright as the galaxy s23 ultra but it is sufficiently bright enough and then the display there's two different sections for the display. There's a live and standard. Standard looks a little bit more accurate, but both a live and standard are fairly accu accurate. But if you just want a little bump in saturation, you can set it to a live, which I've been doing, and it does not look too um, intrusive in terms of being overblown in saturation. Um, this is an HDR display, and HDR videos do look good if you enjoy looking at HDR on a tiny screen. And overall, this display is really, really, really nice. This is definitely topped here in terms of visual quality. There might be some concern out there that this is only 1080p, but this ends up being 390 something PPI and 400 and higher is considered what Apple calls retina. That means most people at this resolution at a regular viewing distance are not able to see pixels. And if you think you're not most people and you'll be able to see pixels compared to like an iPhone 14 Pro or to a S23 Ultra, I promise you'll be wrong. Like the, the text clarity on both the iPhone and the nothing phone looks identical. I mean, maybe there's a tiny bit more sharpness on the iPhone because I'm looking at them side by side, but honestly, in a blind test, I don't think I might be able to pass. It's not something that impacted my decision with this phone. 1080p is actually perfectly fine. Um, it's not even perfectly fine. It's pretty much perfect. You're not seeing pixels at a 6.7 inch display at 1080p. You're just not. I want to start off with the software. So let's start off with the always on display. Um, some of this is customizable, some of it isn't. So you have the time on the top, you have your date, you have your weather, and then my next alarm. And 
This part is really cool and I haven't seen this on any other phone yet. You can actually customize these little buttons right here and it's essentially the Android quick settings. It's essentially all of these settings here that you can typically choose in Android and I'll spend more time when I get to the um, notification shade, but it's essentially these, but you can put them right on your lock screen. So right now I set mine up for, for Bluetooth, mainly so I can see what device I have connected and then with another button, I can, and then with another button, I have access to my flashlight for quick, easy on and off. And I, and I also chose to put my wallet here. So again, with one tap, I'm into my Google wallet, which is really handy for quick payments. And then finally, I chose the do not disturb, but you, so you can turn on and off do not disturb. And there is no other phone out there that has this. And it's such a brilliant feature. And this is just the always on display. This is my favorite always on display by far of any Android phone. So speaking of the lock screen, let's just get right into there. You got easy access to your notifications. And then again, the same quick settings, etc. You can customize these buttons on the left and right. And then with my fingerprint, I'm in. So let's start with the notification shade. Very, very stock-like. One of the biggest differences is when you swipe down, these two panels are much larger. And these two are not customizable, but you can swipe to see your, the Wi-Fi that you're connected to and your network. And then same with Bluetooth. Every single Bluetooth device I have connected is here. So one reason why I like this is I can see the battery percentage of the Bluetooth device I'm connected to and the Bluetooth device that I'm actually connected to at the moment. Right now, as you can see, I have my OnePlus. These two screens are not customizable, but a lot of these are. And if you've used any Android phone, you kind of know what these are. And then when you swipe up, it's regular Android in terms of the notification system. Not much changes here. That's it for the notification shade. So then in your home screen, this is where some other nothing OS 2.0 customizations kind of show up. So, so if, if you're looking at these, you might think that these are widgets. They're actually folders. And I like that it's big, it's really easy to get to. So these are fully customizable. So right, so if you press and hold it, you can customize you. Oh, so first of all, you can minimize and make it smaller like I have for the ones um, at the bottom. But I, I, like the, I like this one to be a large because these are the apps I use a lot. So you can press and hold it and then customize. And then you can choose whether you want grids, default, circle, etc. But I went for cover and you can actually choose these different cover icons right here, which is kind of cool. And if you don't see one that you like, they don't seem like they have everything that I'm looking for. You can click on this little emoji button and then there's just a ton more. So you can just keep scrolling forever until you find exactly what you're looking for. So this improves my user experience w w with this phone, just having these gigantic folders. It just really makes it easy for me to quickly touch it and get into whatever I need. And for some of my less more popular apps, I, I have created these tiny folders down here. So similar concept. Um, this is for all my shopping apps. This is for all my banking apps music, etc. So, and obviously I have my calendar here and I have the weather app. And speaking of the weather app, let's just jump into that really quickly. This is essentially just a, a skinned version of AccuWeather. So if you wanted to see more of the detail on the weather that is showing up here, if you tap on it, this is part of that I don't like, it takes you to the AccuWeather website. I kind of wish the app was a little bit more robust to where everything was inside the app, all the data I would need is inside the app instead of taking me to a website. And or not and, and that's another thing, not everything is clickable. So I think this is a good first attempt at a weather app. I mean, obviously I like the style. I really love this Nothing OS style. Um, it's Carl Payne and his team did a really, good, really good job with designing this. But, you know, I, 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 wish, I wish I had some more functionality in the app. All right, so that's my home screen. So let's just take a look at the settings. So I'm gonna go through some of these. I wanna spend some time in sound and settings really quickly. So there's some really cool things you can do right here. You can flip to glyph, which I do have on. So what that essentially means, when I flip this phone over on its face, 
as you can see that light turns on, that's indicating that it's putting my phone into silent. It's not gonna ring, but if I get any notifications, I'm gonna see the light. So I've actually found that very, very helpful. If, if I'm like working and I really need to just concentrate on something. Oh, so first of all, I'm not typically putting this phone on its face. I'm using the case that I bought from Nothing. And this is actually a really, really nice case. I mean, if you're gonna get a Nothing phone, you have to get a clear case. So this one just, this one's really nice. It's it's like a hard shell plastic at the back, but then like a soft TPU type material on the side. Good mix of materials. It feels a little bit cheap for what it is, but it wasn't expensive. And I also got the screen protector for it too, which I haven't applied yet. But anyway, so I, I'm for, for demonstrations of this video, I'm not using the case, but every other time I'm using the case. So that's, so, so this is what it looks like with the case on. When I don't wanna hear my phone ring, I just flip this over. The light pops on indicating that I'm now in silent mode and all my notifications are only gonna show the glyph lighting. And oh man, and then the ringtones, you could spend all day going through some of these. So that there's some really cool ones here. Let me raise it up a little bit. And, I, and, and it lights up the glyph for each one of them. Let me take off the case for this demonstration. And this is the one I decided to go for. It's the most annoying one, but it's really, really cool. And for you can get enhanced media using Dirac Audio. This is the same software that the ROG phone uses. I don't like any type of enhancements on my audio, so this, I, this I've been leaving off. So now let's jump into this glyph interface. And that, and this is a, and this is something that's only available on the Nothing phone. So right now I have the glyph brightness on automatic. For the purposes of this video, I'm gonna make it bright. Oh, so first I do wanna say um, qu really quickly with the flashlight. So you press it once, you get the regular flashlight, but then if you press and hold it, you get the glyph flashlight. It looks cool. It doesn't really serve as much purpose as the actual flashlight. And one thing that's kind of dumb is only the glyph lights are on, but the actual flashlight itself is off. So it doesn't get as bright. But I mean, if you want to flex, like this looks really cool. Anyway, back to the glyph lighting. And then there's a glyph timer. It's really smart and intuitive and just easy to set. But anyway, so you just, once you do that, then you just flip it down. And then the timer's going. And then when the, and then when the timer expires, this light is gonna go to its off position. So as you can see, it's counting down. And then when it's done, you get like a little notification letting you know that it's done. I wish they had a way to sync this up with the um, regular Google Assistant. With Uber, you can set it up to where as the Uber driver arrives, this light indication will will, will complete. I haven't taken an Uber since I got this phone, so I, I can't. I can't tell you if that works or not, but I'll let you know. And then you also have a glyph composer, and this has been really, really fun to use. So there's five different tones as of right now, and I wish you could combine them in one recording, but you can't. So I'll start off with modem so you can see how that sounds. And then there's Weevil. And obviously, as you're doing, the, as you, as you're pressing the different buttons, it activates different lights. And then there's a 606, which is like a little drum kit, which which is actually a lot of fun to use. I, I do love these tones though. So you, you can make your own ringtone with these. It, um, and then this was kind of cool too. So you, the, the, in the one um, in Dan, you could actually create a melody. So what I really and then oh so so at any point in time, you press this red button and you you could record it. And then you save that and you can make this a ringtone. 
So I wish I could do like that little melody that I did there and then do some drums with it and then make that a recording and then make that my ringtone. So that's the Glyph interface and it's definitely the standout feature from this phone. Other than that, I mean, it's still a great phone, but this is what makes the nothing phone the nothing phone. All right, and so the camera, this camera's good. The stills are, in my opinion, as good as some of the other flagships out there. So for the camera, let's start off with the front facing camera. So one thing I've noticed about the selfie camera, actually people in general, OnePlus, oh my God, I keep calling this OnePlus, I need to stop. Nothing wants to do a little bit of face retouching on skin tones. And I'm not the biggest fan of that. I wish there was a way to turn that off. And even though there is a setting for it, even when it's off, there's still some type of retouching but the colors and the overall look of the photo is really nice and as you can see in this selfie that I took it's broad daylight yeah but look at the shadow roll off I mean some of the gradients going from dark from the darks to the lighter tones within a shadow looks very 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 high quality I know nothing is using their own ISP. It's doing an incredibly good job. I just wish they would tune the software a little bit to where it's not making my face look more smooth than it actually is. And the rear camera is actually really, really good too. There's a good amount of bokeh, even when you're not using portrait mode, the combination of this fairly large sensor along with the 1.9 aperture lens is doing a really really good job it's like if you it's, take a look at the spider i know it's a little bit creepy but it actually captures some fairly good detail at very close up i mean at the, with the 2x lens i was pretty much really close to the spider and then and yeah and then, and then just like i said the the natural bokeh is pretty good so i just took a picture of my keyboard and then if you want to look in the background look at the google pixel tablet you can see that it's out of focus that wasn't a portrait shot and then i just took a few pictures of my dogs um and then just some random pictures here and there like i said i've only had it for two days so i haven't really gotten a chance to go out and um like go out to dinner take some pictures of food and go out with my friends and have a few beers to see what what the nighttime photos are like, I still have a lot more time. I still have a lot more need to do. This is flagship level. I know this is only a six hundred dollar phone, but I, the camera is flagship level. When it comes to video, not so much. It is as good as any other Android phone that's not a Samsung or a Sony, and obviously it can't compare to something like the iPhone. Okay, and so next, battery. I So I started the day at like 9 a.m. with 100%. I watched 14 hours of YouTube, which I know I have a problem. I spent some time on Gmail just doing my work. I did a few video calls. Um, and, you know, to just use the phone like how I typically will. I did some Spotify streaming, etc. And I didn't have to charge the phone until 1 o'clock the next afternoon. So this is a day and a half of battery life easily with just normal use this is this is gonna be my phone i i mean i've like it's that's kind of what i meant from the intro where i've only had this phone for 48 hours but it feels like i've been using it for three weeks this already feels at home for the s23 ultra you're paying six to seven hundred dollars more but you're not getting that much more value out of it same thing with the iphone Obviously, if you need the Apple ecosystem, then you're kind of stuck there. I'm trying to claw my way out because I've been really enjoying using Android since I started doing phone videos. Um, I'm going to go back to laptop videos for those of the for the few of you out there who look at both content. Um, but th this has just been kind of fun to go through, and I think I'm settling. Not even settling. I am sticking with the nothing phone as of right now. I mean, it's only been 48 hours. We'll see what happens in the future. And if I change my mind, I'll let you guys know. But I just want to do this quick video just because like, I, I'm so excited about this phone. I love it so much. And I just had to talk about it.